Hello and welcome back to another video from your University of New Money, University of New Mercy, unm.nu, bronco.tv, numnum. I was going to wait until the end of the year to do my end of year video, but I'm going to go ahead and do it now, which doesn't mean I won't come out with another video before the end of the year. But I just want to do a recap as we're close enough to the end of the year. We'll see how crypto ends. Hopefully January is just as strong next year as it was this year in 2023 when Bitcoin exploded. You'll see that graph right away. But yeah, I definitely want to recap the year. It was a crazy 2023 for me, both in crypto and in my personal life, uh, with my work, with uh, you know just different people having issues in their lives. And so, I mean, just it's been a crazy year. So it's nice to recap it right now. It, from a crypto perspective is, you know, Planet had its own craziness. It started off really low in January. Then we got that boom in February when Byzantine took over for Arthur Curry. Experienced good times. Then we've gotten some setbacks, some stagnation. Now everybody's dying for this tokenomics updates and for marketing to really kick in. Um, up and down year. Hopefully 2024 is an up and just up year, not up and down. But we'll see. I mean, life is up and down. You just got to go with the flow. Without any further ado, let me go and start sharing my screen. I'm going to share this screen right here. And I just want to recap my major holdings. Um, looks like it's sharing right here. I already have it up on Bitcoin. Uh, I'm going to have to move this picture out of the way. Maybe if I move this over here for now. Okay. So I'm going to try to do the yearly charts of my major holdings. Bitcoin is definitely my biggest holding. Started the year at 16700 Tonight it's 42500 Um, You can see, I mean, we've had our ups and downs but mostly been mostly on an upward trajectory we, we avoided the black swan events from last year no ftx no terra luna nothing of that craziness um why we've gone up throughout the year i don't know i mean definitely throughout the year we've gotten more positivity toward a bitcoin spot etf in the united states of course part of this was xrp winning their lawsuit uh and continued updates with ethereum getting closer to sharding uh I wish I could say two of my smaller cap coins were to contribute to Bitcoin going up. That'd be Energy Web Token and Planet. I'm pretty sure my those two projects had nothing to do with Bitcoin, but that's okay. Starting next year, Bitcoin is going to be tied to Planet, so I'm definitely looking forward to that. Taking a look at Ethereum for the year. Ethereum started the year. 1,200 all the way up to 2200. Um, I withdrew my Ethereum as a validator around April, around this time. Um, my laptop just wasn't strong enough to be in a, a validator anymore, but still holding on to my Ethereum, still a big believer in the project, even if I can't validate my Ethereum, as I, I now hold it on planet, earning interest there, getting my gamma rewards, uh, borrowing equity, that sort of thing. Take a look at BNB which is actually one of my smaller holdings, but since it's so closely tied to Planet, I like to follow it anyway. And what a wild year it was for BNB, <laughs> especially with CZ having his lawsuit issues, not being the CEO of Binance anymore. Started the year at uh, $246, went all the way up here to like 350 And then you could just see, I mean, between the fear of Binance having issues with the SEC, CZ actually stepping down, having his own issues, taking the blame for Binance's trouble in the United States. Since then, we've rebounded nicely to 292, so we are still up for the year. Hopefully next year is a more stable year for BNB and Binance. XRP, again with the lawsuit. I'm going to love looking at this graph. Started the year at 36 cents. I think right here is where you just saw that spike up. Haven't really had that continued upward trend since they won their lawsuit. Actually came down a lot right here, but I'm still as bullish on XRP as anything. It's like the all-time high of XRP was what, around $3.60? I expect that price to be double, whether we hit that in 2024 or 2025. I expect it sooner than later. Litecoin. You know, Litecoin is one of the first altcoins. It's been one of the strongest altcoins since they came into existence. In fact, if you look at altcoins, whenever they came out, 2012, 2013, you can go to Coin Market Cap and look at historical figures. Some coins like Namecoin, some of those other ones, you know, 
barely in existence. Litecoin's been, you know, standing the test of time being a fork off of Bitcoin. I do like Charlie Lee and I, I believe in what Litecoin can do. I like the privacy features. Um, just hasn't taken off the way I thought it would this year. Um, we had the halving this year. And as you can tell, started the year at $69. We're at $73. The halving hasn't really kicked into effect here. Very disappointing. What's funny is Litecoin's pretty much the only crypto I've actually used in real life to buy stuff is I bought a copy of Adobe on the internet with Litecoin. Um, I forgot what else I bought with Litecoin. It was some other website that said they'll only accept payments in Litecoin. So I've actually used my Litecoin. I use it all the time for transactions. Like you've seen me do my video before where I use Fiat and I onboard that through Coinbase. I then buy Litecoin and transfer that to Binance. I then transfer that Litecoin to USDT at Binance and then transfer that to my trust wallet. And then that's where I'm able to interact with Planet. Living in the United States stinks that we have to go through all these hoops, but where there's a will, there's a way. I'm still an active participant in Planet. The fees are way higher than they used to be. You know, it's like one to two percent for me to do all these transactions, which in the grand scheme of things, one to two percent fees are still very reasonable compared to credit card fees that a lot of businesses have to face in the United States. And I know that since my family's involved with the Harley Davidson dealership. So anyway, Litecoin still believe in it. Um, energy web token two dollars and sixty cents. What a coin this has been this year. Uh, started the year at three dollars, went all the way up to five dollars pretty much. Since the major downturn, we went all the way down to like a dollar and sixty cents. Now we've rebounded a little bit back up to two dollars and sixty cents. I still believe in energy blockchain, I still believe in energy web token. Uh, you can't stake anymore. That ended on December 15th, I believe, the green staking pool thingy. Um, now they're doing a beta version of Worker Knows. I haven't really been active in that. I'm, there's a lot of confusion right now in terms of how you're going to be able to stake moving forward with these Worker Nodes. I'm waiting for beta testing and all that to work the bugs out and make it super simple for me to maybe start staking again spring of next year. That's my goal. But I'm not selling any of my, any of my energy web tokens. Can still a believer. On to Aqua. Again, what a year for Planet. Started the year at $37. Pretty big downturn as Gamma was taken off. As Gamma is definitely getting outvalued to Aqua, although this is around the time Byzantine took over. So this was just probably the beginning of the downturn you would also see with Gamma. But you could tell the momentum with Aqua is just not there this year. A little bit of momentum recently, up to twenty-two dollars. Uh, it's pretty stable. You can kind of tell over these past the past half year or so. Um, I just want to see a big uh, increase in twenty twenty-four. I I think a lot of us are calling twenty twenty-four the year of Planet. Is this going to be a make or break year for Planet? You just can't keep stagnating. But I know the developers, Byzantine, everybody's working hard. Joe, very active. All you at Telegram, hi. Um, Active community, believe in you guys. I've only built up my holdings this year, which you'll, you'll see when I get to my trust wallet, my infinity wallet. Um, yeah, I expect a lot of things out of Planet in 2024. The one thing that I am proud about 2023 is I started the year with 100 Aqua, ending it with 2,000. Right now, ranked number three in terms of iAqua holdings. Um, again, I started with 100 Aqua, so I wasn't even on the first page when the year started. So been working hard, accumulating the shows that if you dollar cost average, work hard at your goal. Sometimes you can achieve it, God willing. In terms of gamma. Yeah, this graph's going to be fun to look at. And then, yeah, especially if you're new to... Um, Gamma and Aqua and Planet Finance. As Gamma started the year at about three cents. Is that right? Yeah, because that's Valentine's Day. I remember buying on Valentine's Day. I've mentioned that in several of my videos. So I guess we actually did start the year at about three cents. I thought we were lower than that. So we dropped off pretty big in January, all the way down to 1.3 or yeah, 1.3 cents by Valentine's Day. Byzantine took over, enthusiasm in the community built all the way up to 10 cents in March. And then, you know, just a little bit of stagnation here. And then just people started losing faith, selling off. 
this ignore the spike that spike i don't remember i think that was a glitch in coin market cap but all the way down to 0. 0.7 cents here which i was buying at this point dollar cost average since then i mean we did have a little peak up here to like 1.5 cents now we're at 1.1 cents um you know once tokenomics changes go into effect for 2024 which again if you haven't if you're new to planet, if you're not caught up on all the tokenomics changes, is we're switching from gamma B from gamma BNB to gamma BTCB. So uh, we're essentially gonna rely less on BNB and more on BTCB because we're also gonna move Aqua BNB to Aqua BTCB. A lot of developments in the work for next year. Um, if you want good returns on your pools, you're going to want to hold Gamma BTCB. If you want good returns on your vaults, you're going to want to hold in the Gamma Infinity Vault. If you want voting power and uh, profit sharing, you're going to want to hold Aqua in the Aqua Infinity Vault. If you want other good returns, hold the Aqua BTCB and the other pools at Planet. Taking a look at my Gamma holdings as I just did a... I, I went ahead and staked my rewards, my PAP earnings, um, some other gamma I had just bought in the past month or so. So this took me back up to number seven, right behind the number six spot here. I was lower to start the day. So very happy to be in the top 10 for iAqua and iGamma. Taking a look at my trust wallet. Let me go ahead and stop sharing here and start sharing on my other screen. That'll be easiest. Net balance, getting close to 100K again. It'd be nice to end the year around there, and then we'll see where we go in 2024. At one point this year, I know this was up to like 160,000, but this was also way down to like 60,000 recently. So the ups and downs of crypto, you got to go with the flow. Um, happy to hit my 2K Aqua, about 1.5 million gamma. Uh, daily rewards, very nice. I'm enjoying those. Total value locked, still around 12 million. Move my picture out of the way here, back to this screen. Gamma, 1.1 cent. Aqua, $22.13. You can see we've already hit the 81 million circulating supply of gamma, only 19 million left to be released. As we get closer to that, you know, hopefully the platform just builds strength because we got to withstand, you know, no more 100,000 daily minting of gammas. We're going to rely just on the gamma and circulation. So hopefully the marketing is in place by then, tokenomics in place by then. We are going to reduce the amount of daily minting to reduce the amount of circulating supply that increases each day. Hopefully that just gives us enough time to really build up the platform for gamma and aqua to be sustainable. Circulating supply of aqua below 91k. Combined market cap below 3 million. So the potential for this project is huge. 3 million is nothing. I mean, add a zero to that. Get to 30 million in 2024. Is that not realistic? I believe it is realistic. If not more than that. Taking a look at my pools. I always like to go over these with you guys and girls. Uh, ETH BNB Fusion APY 1150%. If you like earning 11,000, 1,100% on your money annually, put in the ETH BNB Fusion Pool the way I've done. It's a small amount of money, but still 1,100% on $500. I'll take that. Hey, USDT Fusion, about 680% APY. USDT BNB Fusion, about a 300% APY. BTCB BNB Fusion, almost 200% APY. Gamma BNB, which will be BTCB very soon, almost 200%. Can't wait to add more money into that. Down here is the Aqua BNB. That's going to really help from the BTCB connection. Um, again, decent returns on my Aqua and Gamma, which are definitely my largest holdings on the pools page. Taking a look at lending, one of my main goals in 2024 is to reduce my borrowing value, hopefully down to zero. At the same time, I don't mind borrowing more if we experience a collapse in crypto, but not expecting that in 2024, expecting next year to be a super bullish year. Bitcoin having, you know, everything. Well, we don't know everything that's going to happen next year, but you get the spot BTF for Bitcoin released with the having. Oh, man, things are going to explode. Taking a look at the APYs again, people need to get their money out of the BUSD. I hear people are having trouble getting out of the BUSB, BUSD lending pool because I think they're relying on people getting out of the BUSD 
borrowing side. So right now there's a super huge negative percentage on BUSD borrowing to incentivize these people to get out of here or get liquidated, whatever it takes. That way these BUSD lenders can cash out and we can get rid of BUSD because it's been discontinued by Binance. But other than that, 73% APY on BNB, 50% APY on BNBX, 38% on a stable coin, USDT, love that. Another stable coin, USDC, about 29%. My larger holdings under 1%, but it's nice to earn anything on my Ethereum, XRP, AVAX, Bitcoin, 2.5%, loving that. So I don't need this to be a super long video. I just went ahead and wanted to go ahead and get this year-end review out of the way. Again, maybe I'll do another video coming up, but hope 2023 has been good to you. Overall, I mean, hey, I've had my ups and downs this year, but I look back and something as simple as knowing I went from 100 aqua to 2000. This was a good year, a lot of good times with friends and family. I'm a very blessed person. Definitely looking forward to a strong 2024. If you've enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, leave comments. Hello, Telegram people. I'll be posting this on there soon as part of the PAP program. You all have a good rest of the year. We'll be in touch soon. I know it. Until then, take care.